Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from Techspert and this wee beastie here is the Nokia 5.3. It costs you just 150 quid here in the UK and yet it boasts a nice slick stock version of Android 10 and some pretty decent specs as well. In fact I reckon this could be one of the best value budget smartphones to come under that £200 price point, a very strong rival to the likes of the Moto G8. But enough yammering, let's yank the Nokia 5.3 on out of its box, take a full on tour of that hardware, the software, the specs, everything you need to know and for more of the latest greatest tech please do plug subscribe and ding that notification bell. Cheers. Let's slide this one out carefully. Don't want to drop the bloody thing. See there, of course, you get a porky pin device to actually get your SIM inside of the phone. You get your usual pamphlet stuff. And very exciting times, you get a three pin plug, you get your USB cable to charge it back up again, and you even get a pair of wide headphones. And yes, they're proper 3.5 mil headphones as well, because you do have a headphone jack on the Nokia 5.3, although the headphones themselves look like the really nasty hard shell efforts uh, that basically take the skin off your inner ear every time you shove them in there. Probably best reserved for emergencies, I reckon. Still, considering the phone only costs 150 quid, definitely a welcome bonus accessory. And in even better news, the USB cable is actually Type-C as well. None of that god-awful micro USB nonsense here on the Nokia 5.3. Sorry, there's what you get in the box. Now let's check out this absolute beast of a smartphone. Now, first up, a fun little fact for you. Did you know that HMD Global, when it first launched the Nokia 5.3, did so with the tagline, stay in the game for longer? And that's why I used to call it the Viagra. But now if you actually go on the Nokia website and check out the Nokia 5.3, they've actually changed the tagline and it's now go big, go beyond. And frankly, the jokes kind of write themselves for that one. But NAF taglines aside, the Nokia 5.3 does look like a solid budget smartphone, although the design isn't exactly particularly inspiring. And frankly, at this sort of price point, you should not expect a stunner. But the most important thing is that that composite polymer frame stays scratch free and touch wood, Nokia reckons it is pretty rugged, so I will of course be testing that out. And about Apparently around front you've got some Gorilla Glass 3 surface and protecting that display as well so hopefully again that should prevent any long-term damage. As for your colour options well this is the slightly less than exciting charcoal model which is of course just black uh, but you can also pick it up in cyan or this lovely sort of bright orangey yellow effort which they're calling uh, sand. And I've had a bit of a scout about online it looks like the Nokia website is only offering the Nokia 5.3 in that cyan colour. If you fancy this charcoal version instead we can grab it from Argos. So the symmetry is located over here on the left edge of the Nokia 5.3. If we yank that open, you'll see there not only can you fit in two SIM cards at the same time, but you've also got a separate micro SD memory card slot, and that can be used to expand the 64 gigabytes of internal storage by a further 512 gigs. Pretty solid specs again for a budget blower. All right, so the Nokia 5.3 is all booted up and ready for action. And you'll notice there's a nice pure stock version of Android here on the Nokia 5.3, pretty standard for a Nokia smartphone. In fact, this is actually an Android One handset, which means you'll get a guaranteed two years of Android updates. So it'll get updated to Android 11 later in 2020 and then Android 12 next year as well, plus security patches and all of the other fun bits along the way. And if you're a big fan of the Google Assistant, you actually get a dedicated Google Assistant button here on the side of the Nokia 5.3. So just give that a push and boom, the Google Assistant pops up and then listens to every golden word that you have to say. You've also got the omnipresent search bar down at the bottom so you can do Google searches that way. You can also activate the Assistant by uh, tapping this little mic button here or by actually just saying, hey Google. And you can even simply swipe up from uh, one of the bottom corners of the screen as well. So as far as Assistant shenanigans goes, you're basically covered. In fact, you're so well covered that it's kind of a shame you can't remap that Google Assistant button to open up the app of your choosing because let's face it, who needs 10 different ways to load up the bloody assistant. Unfortunately, all you can do is knock it on or off. That's basically it. The only button shortcuts you can set up is involving the power button and that camera app. So as you can see there, you can quickly double tap the power button to quick launch the camera like so. And as well as that Google Assistant button, you've also got a rear mounted fingerprint sensor as well, which you can use to quickly unlock the Nokia 5.3. And so far, it's pretty responsive and accurate. Only a slight delay when you tap your fingerprint to that sensor before you into your desktops. And you can even use that fingerprint sensor to drag down the notifications bar with a quick swipe down of it with your finger. Although it's not super responsive and frankly, you can just do it by using your thumb anywhere on screen anyway. So why wouldn't you just do that? And that's even supplemented by a bit of face unlock action as well. Something you don't even get on the latest Sony Xperia 1 Mark II flagship phones. Just tap that power button, hopefully read your mug, and there you go. Again, not the fastest, but it gets there. And it's a good alternative if your hands are a bit mucky, you can't use that fingerprint sensor. As for that 6.55 inch 
HD Plus display, where it's certainly a bit of a base, 6.5 pretty much standard, of course, for 2020 these days. And yeah, it's HD Plus, so that means a 1600 by 720 pixel resolution. So it's not full HD, uh, but to be fair, that's really rare around smartphones at this sort of price point, matches the likes of the Moto G8. You know what, those visuals are still nice and crisp as well. When you get in a bit closer, sure, things start to look a little bit grainier, but I'll be absolutely fine for just kicking back with the show. Doesn't appear to be one of the brightest screens out there, though, so you might be struggling a bit if you're trying to watch a video, especially outside on a bright, sunshiny day. You do get this little nipple notch intruding on the action when you go full screen, but it's not too perky, to be fair. It only pokes in there a little bit, so uh, nothing to worry about. As for your audio, you've got a single speaker mounted on the bottom of the Nokia 5.3, so it will be easy to muffle, unfortunately, if you are clutching the phone in landscape mode like so. Uh, but let's see how it does for power. Let's just boost that volume up. If there are any little stutters or issues or anything like that, if I managed to get my ass handed to me by school children as usual. So yeah, not too surprisingly, it's quite tinny as well. Although on that top volume, at least it's fairly clear. Uh, so you'd be able to use it again for a bit of YouTube or something like that. But guess what? You've got a headphone jack up top, so it's all good. You've got Bluetooth support as well. It's 4.2 rather than 5, unfortunately, but it'll do the job. Again, for a budget blower, it's not exactly a massive shocker. And you do have NFC support on here for contactless payments as well, which is something that occasionally doesn't creep into the old uh, budget category. Now, one area where I find that Nokia budget phones tend to fall on their arse a bit is the performance. Unfortunately, they're quite often stuttery and stammery, but fingers crossed that won't be the case here with the Nokia 5.3 because what we've got stuffed inside is Qualcomm Snapdragon 665 chipset backed by 4 gigs of RAM. That's basically the same setup you'll find in the likes of the Moto G8 Plus and the Sony Xperia 10 Mark II as well, which costs significantly more than the Nokia 5.3. So this usually offers up a smooth everyday performance and certainly here on the Nokia 5.3 that seems to be the case so far. If you're into your benchmarking, that's the single core and multi-core score results. Uh, basically standard for the Snapdragon 665, so no surprises there. Uh, but yeah, so far everyday use just seems to be absolutely fine. Uh, you can load up you know, all kinds of apps, as you can see, lots of them stay uh, sat there in the background as well so it's not like it's closing down apps every three seconds. With the Snapdragon 665 you can even play games like PUBG Mobile on those low detail settings of course but they still play with a respectable frame rate so again I'll be testing this all out for my full in-depth Nokia 5.3 review. And in fact I'd possibly even expect even better performance here on the Nokia 5.3 compared with those other phones I listed off because it's a nice pure version of Android so no clunky overlay or anything like that to deal with. And I've got high hopes for the battery life here on the Nokia 5.3 as well. Uh, in keeping with the Viagra tone I think it's definitely going to have some staying power. It's got a 4,000 milliamp cell stuffed inside, so that should keep you going easily through a full intensive day and hopefully well into a second day as well, especially bearing in mind that stock version of Android. Of course, it's perfectly possible at this sort of price point to get a 5,000 milliamp uh, smartphone with the likes of the Moto G8 Power Lite, but frankly, I think this will do the job nicely, even for a weekend, as long as you don't go too crazy with the game and the Skype and things like that. All of which, joy and delight, brings us onto the subject of the camera tech. And you actually get a quad lens rear camera slapped here on the Nokia 5.3, which seems a bit bonkers, again, considering that £150 price point. And yeah, quite a few budget phones do serve up a multi-lens rear camera these days, but it is often a case of quantity over quality, unfortunately. So what you have here is a 13 megapixel primary lens, and you've also got a 5 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, a 2 megapixel macro lens, blech, and a 2 megapixel depth sensor for your portrait shots. So let's have a bit of a squint at the Nokia 5.3's camera app, and as you can see here, it's quite a feature-packed affair, lots to get your heads around when you first load it up. One of the first things you'll notice is this little icon up here, that's the AI scene recognition, so it'll just uh, determine what kind of subject you're trying to shoot, and then change up the settings on your behalf to suit it. Be it a good bit of text or whatever. No worries if you don't fancy using that though, because you can just knock it off by tapping the little X, job done. As you can see, you've got full HDR smarts and everything up top, and if you want to dive into the settings, just tap that little icon there. And you can play around there with all kinds of features. You've got like some burst shot on there, which is great to see. As you can probably make out there, the focus is popping a fair bit as well, but that's probably just down to the ambient lighting here in the studio. Hopefully once you get out in the wild, it'll be absolutely fine. Lock onto your subjects and keep them crisp. And it is actually recognizing Rainbow Monkey has a face and uh, is trying to keep him uh, nice and sharp in the middle of the photo. If you want to swap to that ultra wide angle lens, just give this wee bugger down here a little tap and uh, oh, colors took a little while to bleed in there. And then you've also got a fast access to the macro lens as well, just by tapping 
this wee jobby here and uh, obviously then you need to get in nice and close to your subject. I still do not see the point in macro lenses at all and let's face it a 2 megapixel photo is going to look gash anyway so doubly pointless. Now you've got a selection of other bonus modes that you can play around with as well including some fast access efforts like the portrait mode which adds a nice bokeh style uh, background blur effect. You've actually got a choice of different bokeh effects as you can see here you've got the classic you can uh, determine the strength of that bokeh action so not too much blur or super blur and then you can get a nice starry backgrounds on the go you can get little heart shapes you can get butterflies all kinds of stuff and if you tap here you can also beautify your subject as well which of course mr rainbow monkey does not need because he's absolutely stunning you also have a dedicated night mode here on the nokia 5.3 which i'm very interested in checking out as well it looks like that uh, can be used with the primary lens and the wide angle lens as well which is quite funky uh, and that will just take obviously a variety of uh, shots of different exposures meld them together the usual night mode shenanigans and already there just with a quick test you can see it's uh, really brightens up the background in particular while keeping uh, rainbow monkey uh, nicely lit as well so uh, certainly seems to uh, hopefully do the job again i'll be testing that out in the wild and if you want to shoot a bit of video it's at full hd resolution by default but you can bump it all the way up to ultra hd if you want a bit of 4k action keep your home movies nice and crisp uh, you can actually shoot video with that ultra wide angle as well but uh, if you swap to that you'll find that you can shoot maximum 720p resolution, so a bit of a drop. And yes, you've even apparently got an option of shooting a video with the macro lens, which just, oh, just why would you? I mean, what are you gonna do, a documentary about ants? Just leave it at David Attenborough, man. You've got a small variety of other bonus modes as well, the likes of time-lapse slow motion for your video, a bit of panorama action as well, whoops. And then uh, lastly, if you swap around to that front-facing selfie camera, uh, what is it again, is it near megapixel? Ah uh, yes, I have just remembered it is definitely an 8 megapixel selfie camera. I definitely did not go away and Google it and check just to be sure. I might just have to dub over this bit uh, with what the actual resolution is if it turns out that's complete baloney. Uh, but it should be absolutely fine for just shooting sort of basic shareable selfies as you can see once again got that AI mode on the go. Uh, so you can try a little snap, you can do a bit of portrait mode action to get that bokeh blurry effect behind you. Add butterflies or snowflakes or whatever funky effect you like. And of course you can beautify yourself, although frankly, pfft, I don't think I need that, do I? Let's add some butterflies, lots of butterflies, mega butterfly action. Take a shot and let's see what that comes out as. Well, I'm not seeing a huge number of butterflies there. It kind of looks like some butterflies might have invaded the uh, the camera viewfinder a bit. Uh, but otherwise, yes, another top draw selfie as always. So that right there, my cheery chums, is a full-on tour of the Nokia 5.3, including a, a good in-depth look at that hardware, the software and everything as well. Everything you hopefully need to know ahead of my in-depth review of the Nokia 5.3 which will tell you what I think of the performance, how good that camera really is, the battery life, all that shenanigans. And so far, as I say, certainly enjoying the Nokia 5.3. Fingers crossed they fix the performance and it'll be an all-round solid £150 budget device. So please do let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Puck subscribe and ding that notifications bell if you haven't already. Yep, yep, yep. And have yourselves a lovely rest of the weekend. Cheers everyone, love you.